Welcome to Juice Guru Radio. Discover what the magic and power of juicing can do for you. And now, your host, best-selling author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Juice Fasting, Steve Prusak. Hello and welcome. Welcome to Juice Guru Radio. I'm your host, Steve Prusak, and this episode is sponsored by School of Juicing at schoolofjuicing.com. Uh, we've got a great show. This is really the Superstars of Juicing episode. I'm, I couldn't be more excited. We've got Jay and Linda Cordich here. Uh, we've got Juice Master Jason Vale. He's going to be joining us from the UK. Uh, we've got a big show ahead. It's all coming up for you right after this. Juice Guru Radio. Want to be part of a weekly juice break to get your body looking hot in no time? Join your host, Steve Prusak, for Juice Time Tuesdays absolutely free with your purchase of the best-selling book, The Complete Idiot's Guide to Juice Fasting. Find out more at JuiceTimeTuesdays.com. Juice Guru Radio. And welcome back to Juice Guru Radio. I'm your host, Steve, and at... I just want to get started here because I, we have so many guests on this show, I don't even know how we're going to get through the hour. At 91 years old, let's bring on Jay Cordich. He truly is the father of juicing. He caused a worldwide movement that continues to this day thanks to his hugely successful TV programs in the early 90s. He's dedicated his life to teaching people about the benefits of juicing. He's the New York Times bestselling author of The Juice Man's Power of Juicing. His wife, Linda, has played a significant role in the success of Jay. She's the co-author of their most recent book, Live Foods, Live Bodies. And Linda's been working around the clock to also spread the message of juicing to hundreds of thousands worldwide. The website, schoolofjuicing.com. Let's welcome to Juice Guru Radio, Jay and Linda Cordich. Yeah, you know, it's, to me, uh, I want to sit back and relax and say, boy, we've said enough. And she says, no, 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 we've got to keep going. There's more, <laughs> more to say. And I said, all right, all right, go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, you're never too old to learn. And the, the more that we stay youthful um, is totally related to, you know, how busy we keep and how much time we give to others and help others through, the, through these, this beautiful transform, transformative process of um, – Changing our diet from the sad diet to the, you know, highly, high raw, high juicing diet. And that takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication. And that's what we're here for, Steve. A lot has changed, right, guys, since the early 90s, Jay, when you got up there in front of the camera and you were talking about juicing. And look at the world we have now. We've got juice bars everywhere. We've got people like Jason who's going to be coming on, people that are leading the movement. What do you think of all this? Well, I think it's terrific. It's, it's, a, it's, a, way, it's a way of life. It's the way of life, you know, and it comes from the heart, and it comes from uh, all this work that we've done, you know, and turned people on. Yeah, ever since 1948, you know, uh, if your listeners don't know, uh, back in 1948, Jay was a really heavy-duty, you know, super successful football player for USC, and he got drafted by uh, Curly Curly Lambeau of the Green Bay Packers, and, and everything was supposed to be football, football. And, boy, I'll tell you, it just – his life came to a halting – stop when he found out that he had bladder cancer and then he found out ironically about Dr. Gerson and from 1948 and on he has been preaching and teaching the power of juicing I mean from all those years and when I met him in 1980 he had already been teaching juicing for probably close to 25, 30 years so um, you know it's amazing to see absolutely to us to see the evolution of juicing and, and, and raw foods in 2014 we're just so grateful you know well why there's an ev- evolution actually it just makes sense Yes, and it works, and it, it works. works. You know, it just makes sense. When, when people see a reaction, uh, what happens when you do drink juices, wow, why didn't we know this a long time ago, you know? Yeah, yeah an instant, and this is why juicing is so effective to people when they start to juice. It's like, I remember when I first met Jay, he'd say, Linda, watch people's eyes when they first drink their first glass of carrot juice. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, I came from a family of juicing from the 60s, so it wasn't that, you know, unique to me. But then the more I worked with him, I, I can't believe people have never had carrot juice. And their lives really do change and within days. This is the beauty of juicing. Well, let me ask you both. What's your favorite juice? I know you juiced up today already. What's your favorite juice? Each of you, I don't know if you have the same juice or if you each have your own. 
I don't know, Lynn. What do you think? Carrot and apple? Well, Jay used to really love carrot and apple, but, you know, back in the 40s and 50s and 60s, you know, carrots weren't uh, hybridized as much as they are now. So carrots really are not. Carrots used to be like turnips, you know. They were bitter and they were, you know, gnarly, and now, you know, we've got, got them to be so sweet. So uh, for the past, maybe the last uh, 20 years, we um, we do more. Um, well, I do most of the juicing now because <laughs> he likes just the carrot and the apple and celery, and I like to do heavy greens. So our favorite juice is probably uh, carrot, spinach, parsley, ginger root with some lime, and uh, probably a huge amount of, of other dark leafy greens, you know, like let's say, you know, let's say we're going to do cruciferous like broccoli or we may want to add something like... Um, Oh, she gets uh, exotic Swiss, on me. Here. I do Swiss chard or something really unique like dandelions or or uh, uh, stinging nettles or something like in this time of year in the springtime. You know we love to do uh, dandelions and, and stinging nettles and so the see the, the the what makes it so exciting about juicing is that you can make it unique every time. But our favorite juices are primarily seventy five percent green and twenty five percent you know something like bell pepper and carrot and and some uh, ginger root and stuff like that. Like for example, today we did um, we did radish, carrot, beet, um, and collard greens because that's what we had, you know, and that's a great juice to drink in the morning to get good energy. Well, when you read up, you read up and find out about these different vegetables and what they have in them, and uh, you start putting combinations together. It's not so hard once you learn about them, you know? Right, yeah, and you can never go wrong with greens. We're really big on juicing greens in the morning because that's where you're going to get your energy. Well, in just a minute, we're guys, we're going to hear from Jason Vale, the Juice Master. He's going to be joining us right here on the show we, when we come back from this break. But what do you think we're, we're going to learn? What do, you, what do you guys think we should try to get out of Jason? Uh, his favorite combinations. <laughs> you know? All right. Well, we like to know um, how much does he juice every day. And, uh, you know, he's way over there in England, and maybe the Brits juice differently than we do. We're going to find out. Yeah, and I'm real curious about juice fasting. There's a lot of controversy with it now, and he's uh, he's been leading juice fasts, and there's that documentary out now about it. So let's find out what results they've had and, and why there's so much controversy. Right, Linda? You and I were talking about that the other day. Yeah, we were. There's, but it's good to have controversy because it it it, it separates the you know the the fluff from the real the real the real issue, which is you know what's what's really going on. I mean, obviously we've been blending and juicing you know from collectively for over a hundred years, and Jay and I already know the differences between juicing and blending. But let's see what other people have to say. I'm very interested. Well, coming up after the break, we're going to be joined by Juice Master Jason Vale right here on Juice Guru uh, Radio. We've got Jay and Linda Cordage. Actually, this episode is for our friends in the School of Juicing at schoolofjuicing.com. We're just going to air it worldwide so everyone could hear it. But this is for all the members of that program. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for being part of this episode. And we'll be back right after this. Juice Guru Radio. Hi, this is Jay Cordage, the father of juicing. Juicing helped me get rid of cancer in my early 20s. And here I am in my 90s feeling fantastic. I want to invite you to join me in our School of Juicing. This online program features award-winning videos, audio books and CDs to inspire and educate you on how juicing can change your life too. Check out our site at schoolofjuicing.com Start living healthy and increase your energy today. Visit schoolofjuicing.com to find out more. That's schoolofjuicing.com Juice Guru Radio Well, welcome back to Juice Guru Radio. I'm your host, Steve. We're so excited. This is really, truly the superstars of juicing episode. I couldn't be, I'm coming out of my skin. I'm so excited. And I even had it, I haven't had my juice today yet. We've got Juice Master Jason Vale joining us right now from the UK, described as the UK's Anthony Robbins and the Jamie Oliver of the health and juicing world. He's the author of several best selling books, including uh, Seven Pounds in Seven Days Super Juice Diet, which hit number one in Amazon. He's the producer of the brand new documentary, Super Juice Me, and we'll hear all about that and so much more. Uh, let's welcome to Juice Guru Radio, Jace, Jason Vale, the Juice Master. Hey, Jason. How are we doing, Steve? You good? Oh, we're great. And hey, Jay, look look what we've got out of the superstars here. Oh, he's great. He's a terrific guy to have on, you know? And I want to congratulate him for his documentary, you know? Thank you very much, Jay, and I really appreciate you uh, being in it and you light up. I mean, we're, to be honest with you, Steve and Jay and Linda, I think everybody who's introducing at the moment or teaching about juicing know that really, 
uh, without blowing smoke up uh, Jay's uh, ass, as they say, uh, he's he's you know he's the um, he's the guy. You know, I mean, you know, I'm not just saying because on the radio, but Jay Cordich is is the juice guy. He's the original guy. He's still the guy. He's the guy that I certainly look up to, and I think that most people in this industry should, if they're not already looking up to him, they should. He is the the father of juicing. He's the guy, really. So we're all kind of in his wake. Really, um, that's what we're doing with you. You know, we're just trying to extend the message that he so profoundly um, started, really, to the extent of teaching America, the mass market America, about juicing. Yes, it's been around since the Vedic times, but it took someone like Jay to bring it into the fore and to make it accessible to everyone. And that's what I felt that, you know, Jay Cordich really brought to the table and still does today. And you know, so many people clearly have still heard of Jay, and so they should. And if they haven't, then, you know, I'm here to tell the world, this is the guy you really need to look up and have a look at. Look at his materials, even from all those years ago that, that have never dated. They can't date because it's, it's, it's nature's truth. So it will always be there. Well, it just goes on and on, doesn't it, huh? And it's, it's what really matters, keeping the body healthy. And it's the juice of the fiber that feeds you. That's a simple slogan that everybody can remember, you know? Yeah. It is. It's the juice of the fiber that feeds you. That's what I remember about Jay. That's what I remember about you, Jay, more than anything else. The juice contained within the fiber that feeds you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I know, I mean, and, I, I, and I get to listen to it every day. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true. And you know what, Jay? You, I don't know if you've had the chance to see Super Juice Me yet. I mean, it's literally just come out. But you, you shine, you just light up when you, you know, I love it. You just got to come alive on the film. And unfortunately, you know, you know, for me, I would have had an hour of Jay Cordage. But, but we, we have to have other people in the documentary. Um, like, but no, it's really, it's, really, it's really good. So I don't know if you had a chance to see it. Have you seen the documentary yet, guys? Or? Yes, yes. yes, we, yes. Jay was watching it this morning. Um, one of your assistants was kind enough to send us the link um, yesterday. So we wa- Jay watched it this morning, and I watched it last night. And Terrific. it's just fantastic, Jason. It's just, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that is going to educate hundreds of millions of people in their own own home. It's better than an infomercial because back in our days, you know, infomercials was the only way to get reach the people. Oh. Mm-hmm. And nowadays they can actually get on their computer, watch this incredible DVD and say, wow, if she can do it or he can do it, I can do it. Yeah, exactly. And the point, it's had such phenomenal response and we're still in edit now. The film's available now, obviously, for people to watch free of charge at the moment anyway. Um, but the for me, you know, we were editing right up to, we had the London premiere, and we were still editing at 3 a.m., and the premiere was the next day. So we're still <laughs> refining it, even as we speak, and come next week, we'll have the, what I would say, the polished item. But you know what? No one's noticed. As far as everyone's concerned, it's already the polished item, but I'm quite a perfectionist, so I like, I like, I like it to be absolutely right, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, it's all kudos to you. I mean, I remember having conversations with you back, um, back in oh gosh, two thousand nine, eight years ago. Eight five, years five, ago. Yeah, this, five, eight years ago. Yeah. Yes, and this was your passion back then. So, and I didn't have the money. The challenge, Linda, is that you know you can have an idea like Super Juice Me, but you know to have the you know to get the resources to make it reality. That's the challenge. You know, it's not cheap to make a film, as I found out. And as much as I wanted to make it eight years ago, I couldn't. You know, that's yes. the point. And so you have to wait till you can, you can do these things, and then all of a sudden you, you, you can put it in the public domain. And the, the response has been insane, genuinely insane. We can't keep up with it. It's great. But more importantly, the aim of the, the documentary is, does it inspire somebody to take their own health back in their hands? That's the key. You know, and Jay's books did that right the way back from the 70s and so on. And that's, and that's what so many people now are, are doing around the world. It doesn't matter whether Jay books, my books, other people's books, whatever, or other people's documentaries. You can't get enough of this stuff out there. That's no, the point. And, and it, just like you said earlier, it just as you said earlier, it's, um, this kind of information, it does not die because no. it's part of nature. Nature is perfect in her perfect ways. And when we connect with nature, we are blessed by beauty beautiful, great, vibrant health. And this is what we are severely spiritually missing as human beings. And once we hook up into that form of like a lot of raw foods, specifically juicing, it's like bingo, wow, oh my God, what have I been missing all my life? And this is why 
you know, people like Dr. Gerson and John Lust and, oh, my gosh, um, you know, Dr. Walker, Dr. Norman Walker. These all people knew this in the 30s and 40s and 50s. Paul Bragg, they they all knew it. And so, and it doesn't change. It it just, it doesn't get, it doesn't. um, It escalates. Yeah, it just, well, it'll escalate the more we get on this kind of stuff. I mean, imagine if there's, you know, a billion of us juicing. Can you imagine how our world would change? (laughs) It would be. And also, and a key thing is, a message out there to anybody listening here is that, and I'm sure Jay would back me up on this, is that, you know, the reason why juicing really came about is because we had already, already veered off a natural path. You know, the, the, the thing about juicing is that you could argue there's not a juice extractor in the wild. But I would argue that there is a juice extractor in the wild. You know, we all possess our own blender and we all possess our own juicer. Your mouth is your blender. Most people never use their blender mm-hmm. when they're eating their food. It goes straight down the stomach. And, you know, when you eat a carrot, as Jay already purports, that the, all it's trying to do is extract the juice contained within the fiber. Fiber, as he stresses, cannot yeah. penetrate through the intestinal wall. However, if you've always eaten live, natural, plant-based food, then the chances are you won't need to juice. But I know nobody <laughs> who, who have, from a very early age, eaten live, raw, natural foods. The vast majority of people are on potato chips. They're on what I, what I call mystery food. You know, it's a mystery what's in it. No one has any idea what's in it. It's full of so many E numbers, so many words you can't pronounce that actually, you know, it changes our entire biochemistry, changes our mind, so we become addicted to it. Yeah. And what we're doing is trying to reset. So when I talk about a seven-day juice reset, that's what I'm talking about. We're trying to reset our biochemistry and reset our minds because it is disproportionate to live on nothing but juice for seven days. I understand how that would seem extreme, but I would always argue that it's incredibly extreme for our bodies that aren't designed for refined fat, salt, and sugar to eat the huge amounts of of those kind of quote-unquote foods. So we have to do something that appears abnormal to rectify the abnormalities that we are already going through. So that's why seven-day juice cleanse, most people, by the time they get past the first 72 hours, if you're listening to this and you think, well, is it for me? I tried it for two days, but I struggled. You never came out the other side. You come out the other side after 72 hours. It takes 72 hours for caffeine to leave the body, 72 hours for nicotine to leave the body, 72 hours to get over the withdrawal Not detox, withdrawal like a drug addict from refined sugars. You arrive on day four on what they call juice high day. Some people it occurs on day five, some day six. But come day seven, everything's reset and people start to crave what I call low HI foods, low human intervention foods. That's what we're looking for, low HI. Forget GI, GL or any other explanation. All we're looking for, how much have humans interfered with my food? That's what we're looking for. So if people are going to eat... I don't know, even animal protein or whatever, you still got to ask yourself, look, is it low human intervention animal protein at least? You know, is it grass-fed beef? Is it this, you know, at least let's have a look at everything here and get the ratio correct. So we encourage as many people as we can to um, go on a plant-based juice cleanse for three, five, or seven days, come out the other side. And even if skeptics are listening in now, you can't be skeptical unless you try it on for size. Don't judge something you've never tried. That's the key thing. You can't judge something from afar. You have to try it on for size. Once you've tried it on, then you can criticize. But if you do it for seven days, you're not going to criticize because you feel so amazing on day eight. It's, it's, It's like a switch that just changes in your mind. Well, th- that leads us perfectly into the next question. This is Steve. And that's, there's a lot, I don't know how, I don't know the climate in the UK around this. In the US, uh, and I get emails a lot about the dangers of juice fasting. Um, there's even vegan doctors that are now speaking out against it. There aren't a lot of studies behind it. Um, it, we can look at your documentary as a randomized study. You've taken eight people from around the world on well, how many? 23 diseases? 22 different diseases. And we can look at it and you can talk a little about some of those results. But what do you say to that? Is it the same thing in the UK about this fear around juice fasting? It's a lot of controversy here. Well, there is controversy. It's extraordinary that there isn't controversy really around people consuming a load of fats on sugar in the wrong form, right? The, the, you know, you don't have to consult your GP before you start eating nothing but fast food. You know, if you're going to go on fast food for seven days, nobody says, well, check with your doctor first. 
<laughs> you know, they don't do that. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. But yet, the minute the minute you go on juice for seven days, you better check with your doctor in case something goes wrong. Also, the minute mm. somebody's on plant-based medicine, due to the fears of the meat marketing board, the, the milk marketing board, it's where you're going to get your protein where you're going to get your calcium, two things that nobody was really concerned about when they were eating nothing but rubbish. The controversy stems around fructose, of course, and there's a lot of authors in Australia in particular that are picking up on this, and there's some scientific evidence that would suggest that fructose is the enemy now, not mm-hmm. glucose. Now, the challenge we have with scientific evidence is that it's scientific hypothesis until it gets proved otherwise, which every five years it gets completely thrown. One thing that is undisputed is that fruits and vegetables grown in the correct soil contains the very biological needs that our body requires to not just live, but to thrive. So I don't know why there is so much controversy. Now, the study that I did, now, of course, it will get absolutely hammered by any scientific source to say this is anecdotal. You took eight people, 22 apparent different diseases, and you put them on juice for 30 days, and they got better. You know, the vast majority, and, you know, know, high cholesterol went down, Blood pressure went down, you know, even something like ulcerative colitis. There was a guy in the documentary, for example, who hasn't had a normal bowel movement for seven years. They put him on medical drugs that was turning him blind. So what was he going to do? So he has to come off the drugs. So now he can't treat the condition because he can, as far as he was concerned, having, you know, awful bowel movements and being in pain every single day for seven years is better than going blind. That seemed to be his only two options. <sighs> now, all, the, all we did, Steve and the guys there, we removed all the toxicity coming in. That's all we did. And then replaced the deficiencies with the best quality juice. No more, no less. It's that simplistic. That's why it's called One Disease, One Solution. Because, you know, I, did, I had asthma, eczema, psoriasis, hay fever, right. overweight. So I was in trouble. I didn't have one particular juice, Steve, to, to sort my problems out. All I did was stop the rubbish coming in, and I replaced it with the finest quality juices and everything just appeared to get better. And again, I'm not saying this will happen to everyone. I'm not saying this is a cure for anything. I don't, and, and in fact, the documentary makes that very clear. It's just saying, look, let's just try and see if there's another way. We, and I emphasize there's a need for short-term medical intervention. We're not being silly here, but I don't understand why plant-based medicine is called alternative and drug-based medicine is called the real thing. It should be the other way around. We need to change that as a paradigm shift, that if plant-based medicine hasn't worked for some reason, then we need an alternative, which is drug-based medicine. And that's the aim of this documentary, really. Jason, what, what was it that got you into juicing? I mean, what, uh, obviously you just said that you had problems with psoriasis and skin troubles and asthma. Uh, obviously you, you were tired of that, but what, what motivated you or what got you into um, understanding about juicing? Well, it's funny. Somebody handed me a book by Dr. Norman Walker, you know, the the late, great Dr. Norman Walker. And they handed me this little book years ago. And it was written in very kind of hard-to-read old English. I mean, you know, he he was an exceptional writer, but far too intelligent for me. (laughs) So so I I had a bit of a struggle reading. But it seemed to make sense that nothing on earth would exist without the color green which was really hit home to me. I hadn't, I hadn't eaten anything green, I think, most of my life, unless it was like green, you know, candy sweets. <laughs> so, so I hadn't eaten any green plant. So I, I wonder why I was sick. So the idea of healing from within kind of started with that book. And I thought, you know, I can't eat vegetables because I hate them. Uh, to be honest with you, I still hate them now, right? I don't like raw broccoli. I don't like eating raw broccoli, um, but I will drink it. So if I can't eat it, can I drink it? So I started juicing and just incorporating a couple of glasses every day to see what would happen. And, and it's an exaggeration. You know, you think people think you're exaggerating. You call it liquid gold. You call it some magic liquid. It's, it's, inc- it's just crazy what this thing can do in the absence. And this is key. In the absence of the rubbish. You know, that's the point. A lot of people cut down. When they go on a diet, they cut down on the rubbish they're already eating. But that's all they're doing is they're still having less of the rubbish. So they'll lose weight, but they don't necessarily get really healthy. So the idea is, hang on a second, can we get the right quality nutrients into our body on a cellular level, bioavailable to the cells? And that's what juicing does. It's a catalyst. A juice extractor is neither here nor there. It just sits on your psyche. Juice extractor in itself is just a gadget. But what it does is it transports those nutrients in the fastest possible way into our cells. And that's all we're looking to do. What was the most noticeable change you noticed when you first started juicing? My asthma. Number one was the asthma, because I couldn't breathe. So the thing was, I was taking my asthma pump 14, 16 times every single day. I would have attacks on a regular basis where I was going to hospital. I mean, I didn't just have... If asthma was on a spectrum of 1 to 10, 
then I probably had it eight. So, you know, every disease has its own severity. So I had quite heavy asthma, if you call it that. I was even taking steroid tablets. And what happened was I started to drink, and I've since learned apple, because apple juice was a base, pure apple juice, as in real apple juice, not cooked apple juice. We get onto that as we get into the interview. Um, But, of course, studies have now been shown, in particular with asthma and apple juice, that actually just reduces wheezing tremendously, and in some cases help to eliminate their asthma altogether. Now, the, the thing, I'm not saying it's a cure for asthma either, but what I did is I removed the dairy, which was like mucus forming, so that was number one I needed to do. And then what I did is I introduced things like apple juice with, mixed with spinach and celery and cucumber and all those things that would just clear up everything. And within a month, this is a crazy thing, within a month I, I, I noticed that I needed to use my, my asthma pump less and less and less. And so that really surprised me. And I thought, you know what, there's something in this. And then gradually, I mean, it took me nine months to get rid of my psoriasis. I was covered from head to foot in psoriasis. And I mean covered. I couldn't turn my neck without my skin cracking. But it took me nine months because psoriasis is a jigsaw. This is why it's so important. This is why when we did Super Juice Me, the experiment, this is on the back of 15 years worth of research. This wasn't some random just have any juice for a month. We made sure that every single color spectrum of nutrition was included. We made sure that avocados were blended in with some of the green juices to make sure we had the essential fatty acids. Yeah. You know, we, there's, it, there's a difference between what people can perceive. There were... There are really good juice, quote-unquote, cleanses out there, and there are some really bad ones. <laughs> so, you know, the problem is, I think, if people go, oh, I'm going to live on nothing but orange juice for a week, well, that's not a good juice cleanse. <laughs> that's not. A dirty you banana, know, maybe. <laughs> you know, that's, that's where the challenge comes in. So yeah, it's important that if people are listening in, that they go to a resource that actually kind of knows this stuff, has studied this stuff, instead of just jumping on a, on a juice bandwagon. Because, of course, the minute anything becomes popular, people jump on a juice bandwagon to try and make some money or something like that. You know, the thing is, is that those people that have been in it for a little while have a genuine passion for this thing. Genuine. You know, Jay, Jay for example, my God, Jay, he couldn't be more passionate. You couldn't get, I don't think, anybody more passionate that will come alive when speaking about a subject than Jay Cordage inducing. It just doesn't, you very rarely see it. I mean, even Jim Carrey did a stand-up of it because that's how funny it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, you know. No, and let me say something. He talks in the middle of the night sometimes. He'll, at 1 o'clock in the morning, he'll start talking about the bloodstream, you know, and I'm like, Jay, we have to sleep. <laughs> You know, it's very rare that I get to speak to Jay and whatever. I mean, I've always looked up to Jay, but, you know, this, this man has made... So people listening for the first time, especially if they're, they've followed me for whatever else and you haven't heard of Jay for whatever reason, um, this man has helped inspire not just one or two. We're talking millions and millions and millions of people all around the world, in particular in the United States. This guy is juice for the Kennedys, for crying out loud. This guy, you know, this guy is the, the, the original deal. So I would just advocate everybody, because you're always looking to re-inspire, because the thing is, no matter how much, how many times you get involved in this, is that we're all human, which means that you get a boost, what I call a juice boost. So that's a mental juice boost. You watch a documentary like Super Juice Me, you read a book like Jay Cordich's, or you watch another de- documentary for someone else, or whatever the case is, and you get what I call a health boost or a juice boost, where you get inspired. Now, the thing is, that inspiration will only last as long as conditioning and other brainwashing will seep back in unless you continue to retune your brain. You can't just have one doc. You can't have all the conditioning, advertising, brainwashing by all the big food companies and big drink companies. You can counteract that within a 90-minute documentary, but for how long? That's why you constantly need to re-inspire. That's why I say to everybody, once a week at least, yes. you go You're and jump right. on TED. You jump on TED talks. You go and see somebody doing a health talk. You go and read another yes. book by a Juice Pioneer of, of of yesterday. You go and do. You do something. You don't need to do a lot either to counter the brainwashing. It takes very little, but it takes at least once a week. Do something. Put some goodness in your mind as well as your body, because your mind. Everything's about your mind. My books are psychology based. So the first half of my book is all about talking about drug food addiction, as I call it, and how to get off that. And then in the end, it's about juicing. But it's not just a simple juice book. There are a million juice recipe books in the world. I mean, to make a juice recipe is one of the easiest things in the world. But to get somebody in the frame of mind where they're inspired to want to do it, well, that's something different. Jason, you're so true. This is exactly based on, oh, my God, so many decades of teaching people. It's always about the mind and the mental state. We have to get through that first. And it's no wonder. We're bombarded by foods every 
every street we drive down, we're tempted with horrible food. So it's almost as if you have to retrain your brain to stay motivated and inspired. That's the key. And once you're there, then the juicing is easy. Do you know what people say to me, Linda? They say, can you hypnotize me to not want, you know, junk food? And I say, listen, it's not a case of I need to hypnotize you. What I need to do is remove the hypnosis that you're already under. Yeah. See, this is where people get it wrong. They think that, you know, people like Jay and myself are brainwashing people to juice or to eat well. But actually, it's the other way around. What we're doing is trying to counter the brainwashing that they're already under or the hypnosis that they're already under. You don't think, listen, why do you think when people, real food is this. This is the way I put it. Real food is where you Look forward to the food coming. So you love the anticipation of the food. You love the food while you're having the food. And then you love the feeling after it. So natural food gives you all those three equations. However, when you go on to drug-like food or junk-like food, the anticipation you like, because you're like a drug addict getting your fix. So you love the anticipation because you're ready to get your fix. You then like it when you first are having it, but then halfway through you start wishing and like a pizza. You know, big pizza that people get delivered and the coleslaw and everything else. Halfway through, they're starting to regret having it. And then they try and leave it. Then they feel bloated. And then at the end of it, they go, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Now, real food, that doesn't happen with. Nobody regret. You can't drink a green juice and say, I wish I hadn't had that. No one. I've never heard anybody say that in my life. You don't have a green juice and and regret it. You have a green juice because you know you're doing the body absolute good. Now, and again, I'm not saying, look, we're in the real world. I'm not a raw fooder, Linda. I'll be honest, I was for a little while. And you know what? I realized I live in today's 21st century. And if you want friends, right? And if you want to go to dinner parties, and if you want a life in today's world, then actually part of that world is to have a degree of cooked food because that's how it is. But it's a balance. And the balance is is not having 10% raw food, 90% cooked. That's not the balance. And you know what I say to people, if you even just aimed for 50-50, I know in an ideal world we need 80-20. You know, and there's going to be some, you know, hardcore people listening to this going, you mean 80-20, Jace, 90-10, and real Americans, real people around the world that will go, hang on, what's real for me? I'm going from a fast food diet. What's realistic for me? Well, realistic for me, if you, if you went 50% salads, raw food, and juices, you're way ahead of the game compared to most people. Way ahead of it. And that's what people don't realize. They can make a small change, even if they were to exchange their breakfast in the morning to a beautiful green shake. I hate to use the word smoothie now because it's been hijacked by these rubbish, bottled, horrible, pasteurized things. So smoothie's got a bad word now. But the thing is, is like these green blends, if you will, avocado blended with some beautiful fresh apple, celery, cucumber, ginger, a little bit of spinach and kale going in all in this wonderful tasting sweet juice as well, a little bit earthy. If you have that as your breakfast in the morning and you normally eat three times a day and you have the same thing for lunch as you had, the same thing for dinner as you had, and you made that one change, you've just changed 33% of your entire diet to plant-based vegan in one hit. All you've done is change your breakfast. You've done nothing else. So we want to make it accessible to everybody to try on for size. Blending versus juicing. Is there a difference? We're going to find out with Jason Vale right after this. Juice Guru Radio. Did you know you can make a great living in the hottest new business trend today? The Juice Guru Certification Program is the world's first online course to give you the knowledge and marketing skills to excel as a juicing coach and start making money in no time. Find out more at juicecoachtraining.com. Juice Guru Radio. And welcome back to Juice Guru Radio. I'm your host, Steve. We've got the Superstars of Juicing episode here. This is really unbelievable. We've got the father of juicing, Jay, and his wife, Linda Cordich. We've got Juice Master Jason Vale from JuiceMaster.com. So, Jason, blending versus juicing. This is another controversial topic. Uh, is there a difference? We get emails all the time. Yeah, of course there's a difference, and there's a place for both. Of course there is. You know, the thing is, is that some blenders some particularly good blenders out there will claim to be a juicer. Listen, I'll tell you this now. If you put a whole banana, sorry, banana, if you put a whole whole banana into a blender or you put a whole avocado into a blender and then you whisk it up, that is a blender. I I don't care what they call it. It's a blender. It doesn't matter. They can call it a bullet thing. They can call it a Vitamix. They can call it this. It's a blender is what it is. Now, 
There are some really good blenders out there. I'm not saying these aren't bad products. These are great products. But the challenge with them is that I, my rule is this. I will only blend something with a juice that I would eat in one sitting. So, for example, I would never eat three carrots at once. Your body is not designed for that amount of insoluble fiber. Let me be clear on this. Your body is not designed for that amount of insoluble fiber going into the stomach at once. You couldn't physically eat three carrots at the same time. It is an impossibility to do that. If you put that into a blender, three carrots, and you blended them up in these super blenders, and you added a little bit of water, which is what they suggest sometimes, so you have diluted it a fraction. But if you then drank that really quickly, the amount of insoluble fiber going into your stomach is not good for you. So the idea is, look, I tend to have half an avocado. Would I eat half an avocado quite quickly? Yeah, I would. So for half an avocado in a blender, I would then juice the rest of the produce. So the apple, the celery, the cucumber, the whatever else. I would then pour that on top of the blender, add a bit of ice, just to kind of dilute it, just a fraction, whisk that up, and then drink it slowly. Your juices, Jay taught me years ago, your juices should be drunk slowly. You know, your digestion starts in the mouth, and you should drink it like a fine wine. You know, that's what you should. That's, and in fact, often I would, if you have beetroot, raw beetroot, I would have people, because it goes red, it goes delicious, I would have them pour the juice into a wine glass because it looks amazing in a wine glass. And it has this little frothy head when it's alive. So I would say there's a place for both. I own a blender, I own a juicer. And I will use both of those products. I tend to have a, what I call a thicky, which is a green blend in the morning. So I use a blender and a juicer. In the daytime, I have thinnies. I call them thinnies, where it's just the juice alone. So I'll have a juice you know, two juices during the day that are thinnies, and then at night, this is when I'm on a juice cleanse, and then at night, I'll have a thicky again. So I'll have a thicky in the morning because it's like a breakfast, so you need to sustain avocado, fat regulates the appetite. In the evening, because, you know, I tend to eat in the evening, so for me, if I had a thin juice, I'd feel like I'm still hungry, so I'd bung some avocado, a bit of banana, happy days, and then in the, in the daytime, I'll have thinnies. But what I don't do is this craze at the moment of getting big handfuls of kale, putting them in a blender, you know, two carrots, put them in a the blender, da -da -da, everything in a blender, a little bit of water, whisking it up and then drinking it fast. I'm personally not a fan of that, but is that better than somebody going down a fast food joint? You better bet your bottom dollar it is, of course. So let's put it in perspective. But at the same time, there shouldn't be that much controversy over blending versus juices. There should be a controversy um, about fast food and white refined sugar and everything else. I don't know why any live food consumed at all. If you can find a way to get live food in your body, then that should be encouraged, never discouraged. Right. Well, you know, Dr. Walker talked about too much fiber in the gut um, from blended foods. It, it, he says it's really hard, hard on the digestive tract to for the body to digest um, blended foods. Well, like for example, um, if you just like you said, when you have so much kale and you put all the you just stuff your blender in all that, it's very difficult to digest because the mouth enzymes haven't had a chance to digest all that cellulose. You know, the the, the tylen and the amylase. Correct. So when it gets in the gut, it just does not, it is not as effective as it is when you're juicing. There's high nutrient density per calorie. That's what juicing is all about. And so I'm so glad you gave us that beautiful, isn't that good, honey? Really good uh, description of what really where we need to go. That is where we need to go. But again, I would emphasize that if you have, you know, people think they have a juicer if they have a blender. I tell you now, look, if you've got a blender in your kitchen, and you're saying to yourself, oh, why well, I need to buy another product, do I? Do I need to get another juicer? Do I need to get a juicer? It's up to you. You don't need to do anything. But if you look at a price of a juicer, maybe $100, right? You haven't got to go crazy, $100, $200, $300. There's, there's juicers now from $50 all the way through to $1,000, right? So you find your price range, and you find something that, you, that will work for you. The thing is, is that you've got to ask yourself, what is more expensive, to buy a juicer and to use it every day, the cost of that, or the cost of something like a dialysis machine? Sounds a bit harsh. But that's the point. This is the best health insurance you will ever own. And we're talking about one glass a day. We're talking about the finest quality organic fruits and vegetables in one glass a day, even if you do nothing else, on an empty stomach. We think a medical pill that is the size of the, uh, a, pi a pin can do so much. We rely on medical drugs. Oh, it can do amazing things, this one pill. And yet we refuse to accept that an entire eight-ounce glass of the finest quality nutrients from nature can do any good or have any impact. If we start to look at it and think eight ounce glass every single day, every morning, this is going to do us phenomenal amounts of good drunk on an empty stomach. And what harm? Number one doctor, Hippocrates, you know, the number one doctor is first do no harm. 
So, you know, the, the side effects of juicing, what are they? Brighter eyes, shinier hair, clearer skin, more energy. You know, these, if, this was, if you're advertising juicing on American television, because in the UK you can't advertise medical drugs, but in, in America you can, and all I see is 20 seconds of you t- telling you how good the drug is, and then another 60 seconds of them te- with the fastest speaking person in the world telling you all the side effects. And yet, if you did that with juicing or nature, there aren't, there aren't any adverse side effects. That's the beautiful, wonderful thing about nature. Well, this is a worldwide issue. Why do you think people are so ill? Well, they, I mean, listen, there are, there, there are so many contributing factors to illness, both mental and physical, and there isn't one contributing factor. Obviously, I think the, the three laws for me, I honestly truly believe this. I don't think nutrition is number one. Now, you might, that might come as a surprise to most people because they think, well, hang on, you're the juice guy, so surely nutrition is everything. But it isn't everything at all. I honestly believe there's three laws, as I call them. Number one is spirit. I honestly believe that spirit, true spirit, the spirit of being alive, the spirit of, of having a purpose, the spirit of wanting to get out of bed as opposed to having to get out of bed, laughing, having good people around you, that produces chemicals that no science on earth will ever be able to truly replicate. So we don't know even what it is. It's the intangible. You know, you can't put a, anything on it because we know that stress, we know the antithesis of that. We do know that stress causes uh, all kinds of disease. We know this for a fact. And, you've, and if people think that the mind doesn't affect the body at all, then you've only got to think, if you feel embarrassed, you go red. You physically go red. <laughs> if you get stressed out, you physically, well, that's what I call my stomach feels knotted. And in some cases, people have genuinely knotted their stomach through the amount of stress in their mind. So the mind-body connection is huge. Number two, I would say, is physical exercise, not nutrition. Nutrition still hasn't come into play. Physical exercise, you want to make sure your lymphatic system is moving because that's where your dead cells are, and your blood has a pump called your heart, but your lymph system doesn't. It requires on physical movement or breathing of some kind. So, and then number three is nutrition. Now, the thing is, you need all three laws, though, because, look, if you get number two and number three right, if your nutrition's good and you're exercising, then your spirit's going to be high. Equally, if, you're, if you've only got spirit, but you don't have the other two, then all of a sudden you feel really good because somebody says to you, oh, your spirit's high. Hey, you've just won the lottery. So you start running around. Then you die of a heart attack because you're running around because you didn't get two and three right. <laughs> so you need the three laws. And I think the reason why people are, about, there's so many people now that are sick before their time. I was. I was so sick, way before my time. I mean, my, you know, I got psoriasis covered from head to foot when I was 15. I got asthma when I was eight. I was, you know, all these things. And I feel better now at 45 than I felt in my entire life. And that's no exaggeration. What's the difference? Well, I've just got live nutrition going into my body. I have a purpose I genuinely believe in, and I do physical exercise every single day without fail. And if you apply these three laws into your life, then your world genuinely changes. The fastest way out of depression is exercise. Everybody knows that without tablets. You know, we know that. In fact, one of the biggest side effects of antidepressant drugs is suicide. I mean, seriously, are we in 21st century world where one of the side effects of an antidepressant drug is suicide? Is this <laughs> is the world gone crazy? So we need to look and think, look, there has to be another way. So we need, obviously, to address nutrition as much as we can, and we need to also, and we need to address people's excuses. You know, the people say, well, I can't afford to eat healthy. I can't afford to eat healthy. The amount of excuses I hear all the time just drive me insane. You know, the same people that say they haven't got time to make a juice can tell you what's going on in every soap opera on television. You know, we just need to figure out our priorities, I guess. But there are several reasons, but there's a lot of fat, salt, and sugar. There's a lot of additives. There's no, unlike the cigarette companies now that have, that have to literally put warnings on, there's no warnings on any, you know, cereals. There's no warnings on this. There's no, you know, and refined sugar, I believe, is the biggest drug on planet Earth today. And I believe it's responsible for more illness than any other drug on Earth. It sounds a bit harsh, but it, I think it's true. Well, what about the 80-10-10 thing with the whole thing about sugar, sugar, sugar? I mean, this is the, the you know, Dr. Graham. How do you feel about that? What do you mean 80 10, 10? Run, run that by me again. No, Dr. Graham wrote a book called The 80 10, 10 Diet, and it's really based on, you know, lots and lots and lots of fruits and lots of sugars. And I, I just was wondering if, if you had a comment about that. I do, yeah. I think I, I, I'm not anti-fruit. I think the rest of the world is. I'm not. I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm on the fruit side of life, right? Oh, so are we, yeah. I'm on the fruit side of life, and I think it's very difficult to argue against the fruit side of life. Here's what I do. Instead of relying on science, I rely on intuition, gut feeling, and common sense. And I would ask all the listeners out there to take this scenario and just 
See if it makes sense to them. If all sugars are apparently the same, because that's the argument, isn't it? After all, all sugars are the same once metabolized. That's what everybody tells us. So therefore, when somebody sees an organic apple juice mixed with celery and cucumber, they will say it's got X amount of teaspoons of sugar in, as if it actually has some white refined sugar in it. It's a ridiculous statement to make. If all sugars are the same, how come is it? If you had a fridge full of nothing but fruits and vegetables. Imagine this now. It's got nothing but fruits and vegetables in the fridge. If you are a true sugar head, like a sugar addict, like a white refined sugar addict, and you went to that fridge and I said, oh, dinner's in the fridge, and you was expecting bread and pasta and all these other sugar-laced foods, and you open up the fridge and all you saw was fruits and vegetables, the sugar addict will look and think there's no food in the fridge. Because as far as their brain is concerned, that isn't food for them. Because they are addicted to white refined sugar, which is different. And this is also why even people on the juice cleanse, they're apparently getting tons of sugar, as the anti-fruit brigade and juice brigade would have us believe. Why do they still crave the other kind of sugars during the first three days of a juice cleanse if all sugars are the same? If you're having four or five juices a day, then surely... If all sugars are the same, you're getting all your sugar fix you need. So why are they craving a different kind of sugar? Because all the sugars are not the same. And that scenario alone should have people thinking, forget science, maybe there's something more to it than meets the eye. What about uh, when you're juicing or juice fasting or working with your clients or in your books, uh, if they're just for the straight fruit juice, are you recommending it's watered down or are you saying it's okay to go ahead and just drink it as is? Well, when it comes to a juice cleanse, well, listen, I'm all for fruit, but you can overdo anything. Clearly, of course you can, no matter what it is that you, that you have in, in, in life. But what I would uh, say with fruit juice, all of my cleanses, if you will, they're primarily based with, if there's any fruit in them, it's apple. Now, there's done studies on apple juice, freshly extracted apple juice, that are a relatively low glycemic index, whereas cooked apple juice is very high because, of course, it still has the soluble fiber in. So there's nothing wrong with apple juice mixing with the vegetables. That's fine, and I don't tend to water that down a bit of ice. So on my cleanses, you won't see things like grape juice, for example. You won't see that on, on the juice cleanse. I tend to eat my fruit, drink my vegetables, and I tend to encourage people to do the same. And the reason being is because, look, of course, fruit sugars are absorbed more rapidly. Of course, everybody knows that. So therefore, it has a little bit more insoluble fiber in them. It will slow down the absorption of sugars in the bloodstream. And on top of that, you know, if you pick organic strawberries in season, you don't want to juice those. You're going to waste them. <laughs> you, want to, you want to savor those bad boys in your mouth. They're so beautiful, and they're pre-digested by the plant anyway. You know, these aren't, this looks like a hard carrot, is it? You've only got to look at that. It's not a hard carrot. These are soft fruits. If you get a mango that you're eating off the bone, as they call it, it's actually a seed in front, but they call it a bone. If you start eating a ripe mango, I'm not going to juice that mango. I'm going to eat it because it's beautiful and ripe and delicious. Am I going to eat a raw carrot? Some people do. Me, no. Thank you. Am I going to eat some raw beetroot? Not in a million years. Am I going to eat the stem of a broccoli? Not, in, not for me. So the, the reason why juicing is so powerful, I think, because it encourages people. In fact, I don't believe that people would get the amount of nutrition. I certainly wouldn't. Live nutrition into their bodies without juicing. Some people will, because some people love eating nothing but raw vegetables and raw food. But we need to understand, if raw food is listening into this, you make up such a tiny percentage of the world. You know, what we're trying to do here is trying to convert people that are even having no live food at all. And we're trying to just come over to the other side and try it on the size. Just a little bit, you know, just a little bit. 20, 30, 40% makes a big difference. If you, and Linda, this is so important. If I was to go to a, a burger-eating truck driver, and I said to him, listen, really to be healthy, you've got to eat nothing. You've got to eat 80% raw food and 20% low human intervention food. Now, that is so disproportionate for that truck driver, he's going to say, forget it. Whereas if I said to him, look, for five days a week, can you change your breakfast? And all of a sudden, it's doable. There's a, this little stepping stones. It's doable. It then he is. Starts to feel, and then he starts to feel better, and he think, hey, you know what? I might try one of these three-day juice cleanses, see what happens. 
Well, we touched on it before, but can you tell us a little more about your uh, recent movie project, Super Juice Me, and what led to the uh, to creating this? And and we've got a link right here under the show notes, so you guys can check this out and sign up and and hopefully get in while it's viewing free, which is pretty incredible. What led to this project, Jason? Years and years I've been getting, as Jay would have done for years, but I mean, I, when I wrote Seven Pounds Seven Days, the the, the juice diet. It was, I didn't even want to call it that, unfortunately. It doesn't work in Europe, most of Europe. We've got the metric system. So, <laughs> so we don't in England. Seven pounds in seven days works, but they got translated into Turkey called three and a half kilos in seven days. It doesn't quite have the same ring. But anyway, <laughs> um, but what we found was people were sending in letters, not just one or two, but over and over again of not just the fact they lost seven to 10 pounds in seven days. I mean, that, that was by the by. It was all the other ailments and conditions that they were suffering from that were improving in such a short space of time that even surprised me. So I know that when people incorporate one or two juices into their world and they're still eating some other stuff, that yes, it makes a difference, but, but, but not as rapidly as when you remove everything for seven days and all you're having is this. It's, it's almost like you've condensed success. It's like a crazy, crazy things happen. So I've, one or two testimonials is deemed as anecdotal. You start getting 10 or 20, it's still anecdotal. You start getting hundreds, it's still anecdotal. We have tens of thousands, tens of thousands, and that's no exaggeration, tens of thousands. So then I started thinking, look, hang on, everything seems to be getting better. So it's the same program for everyone, but everything seems to be getting better, from fibromyalgia to eczema to all kinds of stuff, to varying degrees. I'm not saying it cured them all or anything else, but in the space of seven days, things were happening. So I thought to myself, I wonder, and this is what Linda mentioned before, about eight years ago I was even talking about this. I wonder what would happen to a group of people with apparent different diseases. And I say apparent because I believe there's one disease, one solution. I believe if you change the terrain where your cells bathe, then ultimately the body wants to heal itself primarily. There are exceptions to this, but primarily. Or lifestyle diseases are caused by lifestyle. That's what I call lifestyle. So if you change your lifestyle, surely it would heal. So I wonder what would happen if we get some diseases. 22 uh, diseases, eight people, put them on nothing but juice for a month, take them to my retreat, see what happens. And that's what we did, and that's what led to Super Juice Me. Because some people need juicing, and other people genuinely need super juicing. Not everybody does, but some people, when you look at them, and you'll know, you'll think, you need to be super juiced. That's what you need. You need 28 days of the removal of all the rubbish, and then some good quality green blends along with some, you know, genuine juices going into your body for 28 days and see what happens. And those that get to view the documentary, if you miss the free viewing anyway, I mean, literally it's going to be available to rent, for example, for like five bucks. I mean, if your health isn't worth five bucks, then you're in trouble, right? So anyway, um, so you can rent that out anyway. Hopefully you'll get in the free viewing type. But the point is this, is that when you see the diseases that we chose, they weren't easy. You know, people on there with Crohn's disease, lupus, ulcerative colitis. I didn't pick just the easy ones. And I consider eczema to be the easy one. I consider high cholesterol. I can't believe the amount of cholesterol-lowering drugs that are now being pimped around the world. It's just, it drives me insane. I think it's the biggest scandal of the 21st century, personally. And if you're listening to this and you're on statins, as they call them, cholesterol-lowering drugs, please clearly do not come off of those drugs on the back of this conversation, clearly. Obviously, you must consult your doctor first or whatever and just see if they're whatever. So I've done that. I've said that. Now I'm clear. However... I would say where all of a sudden this has come from. You know, all of a sudden this cholesterol thing has gone out of hand. And I've done, not studies, but we've got so many emails that have come in from people that's done the seven days or they're super juicing me saying cholesterol just went down. I mean, that's what happens. The body just rectifies and heals itself. So that's what the documentary is about. But what people are doing is that they're what I call, you've seen the film Pay It Forward? Well, we're juicing it forward. That's what you do. You juice it forward. You tell people about it. So, you know, anybody you care about. You know, we ran Super Juice Me Sunday. We're doing it again this Sunday coming. Super Juice Me Sunday is where you, people are throwing Super Juice Me Sunday parties. They, they're literally beaming the film on a projector from their smartphones or their iPads onto a big wall and they're making juices, and they're inviting people around to sit down for 90 minutes and watch this documentary. The average person in America will now spend 10 years watching television. All I'm 10 years. All I'm asking is that you use 90 minutes of those 10 years wisely. <laughs> if you're going to sit down and watch something, then why not just 90 minutes? 
Forget the X Factors, American Idol, blah, 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 just for once. For 90 minutes, take time out, invite your friends, family, colleagues, make some juice, sit down, watch the documentary, and see if we can evoke even a tiny change in somebody that you care about. Well, it's an incredible effort, and wait till you see the results. It's just, um, it's required viewing. We've got the link under the show notes for today's episode, so do check that out. Jason's going to share with us, how much should we be juicing in between our juice fasts? How much juice is he drinking every day? Uh, When we come back right here on Juice Guru Radio. Juice Guru Radio. And welcome back to Juice Guru Radio. I'm your host, Steve. We are here with the superstars of juicing, father of juicing, Jay and Linda Cordich. What we call Linda the mother. Linda, are you the mother of juicing? <laughs> well, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> And Juice Master Jason Vale over in the UK joining us here and an incredible show right here. So, Jason, before the break, we were talking about the idea of how much should we be drinking? How much juice are you drinking in between juice cleanses and what are you recommending? Well, it's funny because I tend to I'm a juice cleanse person. So I would tend to I would prefer to go on a juice cleanse when I feel a bit like a car going in for a service. I put my body in for a service. And I do that several times a year. I at least do that once a season, so when the season changes. And, in fact, we run big global online juice. They're always free, like the world's biggest juice detox, the big summer juice detox. And it's all free. You know, on Facebook, Twitter, I do free videos. Everybody gets involved around the world. They share their posts, and we do like a five-day or seven-day cleanse. So I'll do that at least four times a year. Last year, I did a 28-day cleanse because... We filmed the documentary, and I did the 28 days with the guys. You know, I wanted to know exactly what they were going through, what they were feeling, so they couldn't say, you don't know what it's like. I could say, yes, I do, because I'm doing it. <laughs> In between that, though, I tend to have one or two juices a day. That's it. I tend to, and the vast majority of the time, I will have one a day. And that one a day is my morning. Everybody structures it differently. So no one needs to copy exactly what I'm doing, but I know that juices are more effective as Dr. Norman Walker, Gerson, Jay Cordich, everybody's performed, oh, ever since the dawn of time, saying when your stomach is empty, that's when you're going to utilize those nutrients more. So, Absolutely. first thing in the morning, I know my stomach's empty first thing in the morning. So what I tend to do is I tend to wake up in the morning and I want to be a fat burning machine in the, mo- in the morning. So what I want to do is I want to just make sure that I'm running on, on that natural energy. So what I do, I have water or a peppermint tea, and then I'll jump on my bike or jump on my mini trampoline. Or so I'll do exercise first. So on our retreats, we do two hours exercise before we even have our first juice. Right? So I run the New York Marathon and the London Marathon, both on nothing but juice. None of these carb-loading nonsense. That's what I do. Now, I'm not saying everybody needs to do that, but I'm saying that's what I do, just to prove that juicing is actually okay. So I would, I would, then I finish my workout and everything else, and then I would juice. And then that juice tends to be half an avocado in a blender with, and I tend to have to say, I'll tell you what it is, it's apple, it's celery, <laughs> it's cucumber, it's uh, sometimes raw beetroot, some not, sometimes I like a red juice, sometimes I like a green juice, so I'd swap them over depending on the day. Spinach. That tends to go in a little bit of lime, a little bit of ginger, all going in together and, and mixed with the avocado. And, and, that, and sometimes a little bit of pineapple juice on top as well because it gives it this frothy head that's just amazing. Um, and then I, I sip it slowly. And I tend to have the same juice every day. And people say, is that boring? And I say, well, you have the same cereal every day. <laughs> Everybody has the same. We tend to be creatures of habit. We tend to find what we like. And then we tend to have the same thing every day. So I'll have that juice in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I would say four days a week, here's what would happen. Four days a week, I would have a juice in the afternoon. And then in the evening, I, I tend to eat in the evening. Nobody does. Some people like to juice in the evening and eat during the day and whatever is different. But I tend to have like a big, I'll have anything really. I have no restrictions in my diet. I just, because I don't like to be restricted. Um, but I just don't want the junk the vast majority of the time. So what I'll eat are things like, you know, massive avocado salads with a piece of beautiful salmon on top and some crap black pepper and wholemeal pizza bread stuffed with some stuff and some hummus and some guacamole and, you know, these kind of stuff. It's straightforward. I love rice. I love noodles. I love Thai. I love, you know, these kind of dishes in the evening are beautiful. And sometimes I'll eat 
light. But what I will do every single week is that what I'll aim for is a juice cleanse day. So, you know, Dr. Roy Walford back in the 1940s proved that if you just starved a mouse of its food twice a week, you could double the lifespan of a mouse. Now, I'm not saying you'd double the lifespan of a human if you did that, but there's no question that if we just freed up our digestive system just for one day a week and just did that, then happy days. So that's what I tend to do. But, you know, people are different. So some people will juice most of the time. Some people juice only at weekends. There's a lot of weekend juicers out there, right? There's a lot of them, and they just get their juice right at weekends. And, you know, that's better than not getting it out at all. And if you're eating tons of salads and vegetables, then you're fine anyway. As long as you're eating, chewing them properly and you're letting them go down to the stomach, then the stomach can, is your, your stomach is your juice extractor. I mean, that's what it is. Um, and if you're doing it properly, then fine. But I don't want to scare anybody off of juicing. I just want to say, look, if you're listening to this and you've never done it, never tried it, then just one a day, four days a week, two days a week, three days a week. Try it on, you know. And, you know, the thought of drinking broccoli may sound worse than eating it. But trust me, if you mix it with a bit of pineapple, a bit of lime, a bit of ginger, give it a bit of a kick. And when it comes to juicing, I would always add a bit of je ne sais quoi. I would add some chili. I would add some lime. I would add some ginger. I would add some turmeric. I would add... It's like cooking. You want to give it that little kick, that little something, that little je ne sais quoi that says... That's mine. You know, everybody become their own juice master in their own kitchen. They go, yeah, I'm going to put my little thing on it. Okay, uh, Jason, uh, we just wanted to ask you lastly, um, what are your plans for the future? Well, the thing is, is that I was, funny enough, I was, when I was at the London Premier, I thought, you know, there's only so many times you can talk about the same subject, right? Because <laughs> Jay must feel the same way. And, you know, I've, I've written now 10 books on health, nutrition, and addiction. I'm writing Super Juice Me, the book. Obviously, as we speak, that comes out in January. Um, but the film's out. And it's one of those that we have a passion to continue doing what we're doing. And then the, the, the aim was always to juice the world. That was, that was the aim. So as more and more people, I want a juicer and a blender to become as common as a kettle and a toaster in everybody's house. I don't want it to be one of these gadgets that people think is unusual in a house. I want it to be second nature. Um, I mean, in the U.K., 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 0.5% of the population owned a juicer. They didn't even know what one was. I mean, heaven knows what, when Jay started in the set, well, he started way before the 70s, but when he was educating um, America in the 70s, when he, you know, really got involved in that, I mean, no one had heard of a juicer, you know, really. <laughs> they just didn't even know what all of these things are, but people are now more and more educated. So... It's just to continue as collectively doing what we're doing, just trying to get people off of the junk, trying to raise awareness. I want to get juicing into schools. I want to get juicing into hospitals. I want to get, you know, the one place that juicing needs to be is in hospitals, especially here in the UK, you know, because all we, we have ping food. I call it ping food. When you're in hospital, all you hear is ping, ping, and that's the sound of a microwave. So it's ping food. Mm. So we want to move away from ping food and onto live food. And, you know, I'll finally finish off with this. Look, if people are listening going, but I don't have room for a juicer on my, in my small kitchen. If you have a microwave, pick it up, throw it through the window, and put your juicer where your microwave was, and you have room for something that gives you life rather than takes away life. Phenomenal. Uh, unbelievable show. Great interview. Jason Vale, Juice Master, thank you so much for being with us, joining us from the UK. His website, juicemaster.com. An honor to have you. Thank you for being on the show, Jason. And father of juicing, Jay and Linda Cordage, thank you both for uh, being here. This has been quite a celebration. It's great thank being you, Adam. It's been, and it's been a, true, uh, and a true honor to um, just to be on with Jay Cordage. When, you know, Jay came over to the UK about five years ago. Uh, we shared a stage, and it was one of the um, just one of those moments in my life that I'll never forget. So I'll always be grateful to to Jay and Linda for everything they brought uh, to the juicing world. And uh, I just again encourage anybody who who don't know where you've been if you haven't heard of Jay Cordage, um, but you just got to look this guy up, get his books. Get the, this is the the true father of juicing. So don't let your juicing life pass you by without looking this man up. And thank you all for being here. Thanks for tuning in to Juice Guru Radio. I'm your host, Steve. Not much more we can say about this. This has been phenomenal. Thanks for, for being here, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Juice Guru Radio. Find out more about us at juiceguru.com. Until next time, get your juice on.